Inside Angular 19, we got a new feature which is called Angular Resource API, and it is really an important change in Angular. This is why by the end of this feature you will know what it changes in Angular and how it works under the hood. This video is brought to you by Bicepta. And one of the most popular products of Bicepta is Mock API, which allows us to create a fake API in a matter of seconds. We just need to paste here our JSON and select the URL that we want to create. Here the response is 200 and we are clicking create mock server. Now we can use this URL with slash articles to get access to our mocked list of articles. Additionally we can configure different rules, for example when we need to simulate a delay. Now we will get our articles only after 2 seconds. To try it yourself, check the link in the description box below. With that being said, let's jump into the video. So first of all we must understand what we had previously in Angular. We just used HTTP client everywhere when we need to do some API calls. So when we get a list of users, we are using HTTP client. If we want to create a user, we also use HTTP client. And actually this is staying kind of the same, because resource API can't just replace completely HTTP client. Let's look at that. Here is an example of the resource, post resource, where we are creating a resource with the load inside. Most importantly, resource can only help us with the get, it can't help us with all other requests like post, put, patch or delete. They are not there. This is why no, this is not a replacement for HTTP client, at least yet. But let's have a look what we are getting here. The resource is just a function where we are providing an object. Request is not mandatory, but loader is mandatory. And most importantly here we are returning the fetch, which will get us a promise, which means inside loader we are returning any promise and not an observable. What does it mean? We can't really directly use here HTTP client get. If we want to, we must convert it to promise. What does it mean in the long run? Angular team tries to limit the amount of RxJS code that we are using inside Angular, or at least simplify ways to do things without RxJS. Realistically, from my perspective, this is quite difficult, because RxJS is an extremely versatile library, which can help in a lot of difficult cases. But sure, it is quite difficult to start with RxJS, it can be quite complex, this is why having an easy approach can be beneficial. So now we have a resource, where we are providing a loader, and we must return here promise. In order to do an API call, you will typically use fetch, which is there natively in your browser, or you can use HTTP client as promise if you want to. In this case here I have fetch, and it returns for us promise. As you can see, the result of it will be a resource ref post array. So here we are providing two things. First of all, post array, this is what data we are getting back. And the second one would be our options. If you don't have a request, you must provide here unknown, because you didn't provide any object in the request. Now let's have a look in the HTML. As you can see, I used lots of resource here. First of all, here is our for loop, where we are reading post resource dot value. And as you can see, value is our writable signal of post array or undefined. Which actually means we specified there a data type post array, and we're getting here an array, we can loop through this data and render it. Which actually means resource is based on the signals. This is why in the browser we successfully rendered Angular React and View, which is our API call. But here are some additional things. First of all, we're getting is loading, which is a signal inside, and we can use it in order to render a loading indicator. For example, when I'm reloading the page, you can see the loading there for one second. This is exactly this part. Additionally, we have an error, which will store an error if something will throw an error while we're doing a promise. And we can also read it as a signal. And additionally, here we can read a status of our resource. And here I am using resource status.resolved to compare it. As you can see inside my TS file, I used resource status, which is coming from Angular Core. And this resource status is an enum with different values like idle, error, loading, reloading, resolved, and local. This is extremely useful if you want to write some logic designed for specific status. 
Now let's uncomment here request. A request is an object with some parameters that will trigger the API call again. For example, here we are specifying in our object the search value, and this search value is the signal. As you can see in this line, it's a signal of string, and we are using it inside our request, which actually means when this signal changes, our API will be called again. And obviously it is not always an API call, it can be any promise. And inside loader, as a parameter, we're getting access to the request, which is exactly the object, in our case, with a search value. So the search value changes, it comes here in the request, and we're using it to make a new API call. How does it look in the browser? We can write here ang, hit enter, and then after one second, we will get a filtered result with Angular. Because here we're setting our signal value, our post resource reacts to this change and puts the signal value inside our fetch. And this is not all, as a second parameter inside our generic, we are providing the type of our request. It is not unknown anymore, it's an object with search value string. This is exactly what we specified inside our request, and we can add here different signals. One more important point to know is that we are getting access to a writable signal. What does it mean? Here I have a netpost function, and we are using here postresource.set, where we are reading a value of postresource, and we are forcefully adding here a new object. What does it mean? I can click here at post, and as you can see, we are getting Node.js directly as a last argument inside our array of data. This didn't trigger an API call at all, it is just a writable signal and it was updated. But it works exactly like a linked signal, at the moment when our request will trigger again and we are getting new data, this change will be overwritten. So if I am typing here react, and I'm hitting enter, as you can see we're getting data again, and now our change is not there. Additionally to that we have a useful function which is called reload. Sometimes you want to just forcefully call your API again, so you can clean your changes from writable signal. And for this we have a reload function, which means if I'm clicking here at post, we're getting here known chest, now I'm clicking reload, and our request is done again, and we're getting data from the API again. And the last thing that we must know about resource is that we are getting abort signal out of the box. If you don't know about abort signal and abort controller, this is the way to abort our request inside JavaScript. And typically we are using abort controller together with fetch to cancel our request that we don't need anymore. We can do exactly the same here, by first of all getting abort signal as a property inside our loader, and then providing inside parameters to the fetch signal abort signal. And what it does, it will cancel the previous request. For example, I am typing here extremely fast, and as you can see, all these requests are cancelled, and only the last request is happening. This is extremely useful when you don't want to hit your API with lots of requests, you can just cancel them beforehand and just execute the latest request. The last thing that I want to mention is a Rix resource. As you can see in the official documentation, it is based on Rix.js and it has the whole API like the normal resource. The only difference is that Loader accepts an observable and not a promise. But again, it is only about first value from, which means it is only the first value from the promise and all other values are ignored. Realistically, I don't see a point of such function, because if we are going to get rid of RxJS, we can simply use resource, and if you are still using RxJS, you are totally fine with HTTP client. But the Rx resource allows you to write your Rx code in a more declarative way. And if you think that you are lacking knowledge to prepare for Angular interview and you would like to get a list of questions, I prepared for you a free PDF which will help you to prepare for Angular interview, and you can download it in the description under the video.